I'm happy that you're here today. I'm going to be sharing something with you that I've never shared on my public page before. We've been playing with these beautiful uh, melamine plates in the napkin club. And I want to show you how we're working with them and what you could do, because I've been wanting to make myself some Christmas uh, plates and trays. Now, these are things that could double as decor. OK, very easily. This could just be decor. You could have a cute little plate. You can see these plates look so cute. They look they kind of resemble like a paper plate, but they are melamine. Um, which is great, which is really strong, really durable. Um, we also have trays. So we have two sizes of plates, two sizes of trays, and they're so cute. I love anything that can double for me, right? So it can double as a cute piece of decor, but if I need it to function, I can pull it out real quick to put some Christmas candies on it or Christmas cookies or whatever I need it for, <laughs> right? So these are the surfaces I'm going to be using today. I'm going to go ahead and post a link so that you can see them. Um, and check them out. And uh, what we're going to do, you guys, what we're going to do with this. Oh, it posted twice. Interesting. OK, well, that's OK. Um, but what I'm going to be doing with these is I'm going to be adding napkin art to them. I'm going to share my tips with you on how to create a template for them if you want things to fit right in the circle or right in the rectangle. Um, and we're going to have a good time. We're, it, what I'm doing is very, very basic napkin art, very basic napkin 101, okay? And then we're also going to talk a little bit about resin, okay? I'm not going to actually resin these plates today because really if you're going to add resins to something, it really needs about 24 hours of dry time. Um, I like to make sure everything is really good and totally dry. But I do want to show you another melamine plate that I have... Um, done in the past. This is a melamine tray. Okay. This is napkin. All of this is napkin. And I don't know if you can tell, but I added sparkle. Can you see the sparkle on the lemons? Did this one back in the summer. And this one has had resin um, applied to it. So you can see the, the lights, the, the glare up there. I'll try to hold it like that. There we go. <laughs> So these are really fun. You can add your own sparkle when you do apply resin to them. OK, um, and I'll, I'll, like I said, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, once the resin has cured, they are food safe. OK, now, no matter whether you add resin to them or not, or you just um, put a top coat of Mod Podge on them, that kind of thing, or spray sealer, whatever you, you decide to use. I'm using Mod Podge today. Um, you just have to know these, these, even though beforehand, when they're like this, they're dishwasher safe. But the second that we do something to them, they no longer are dishwasher safe. But you can like um, um, hand wash them. I would not soak them in a, a sink of hot sudsy water. I would literally just, there'll, there'll be ones that you'll just kind of wipe clean and dry, okay? Take a washcloth to wipe clean and dry. So we don't really want them submerged, submerged in water for a long period of time, and they will not be dishwasher safe. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> okay, well we're going to get started this morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Now um, I really appreciate you guys on all these Christmas craft and chats. You guys have been so good to sprinkle the videos out. So I'm going to ask that you do that again for me. You guys are awesome at doing that. And then we're going to actually have four giveaways today because I have two sizes of plates and two sizes of trays. And uh, I'm going to give away one of each. So if you are live watching in the comments today, Vicky, Vicky's here watching all the way from Germany. That's awesome, Vicky. Hello. <laughs> uh, I'm going to set up our live giveaway right now. Let me do that. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's do it this way. Okay, let me get this going. So it's going to start um, capturing those of you that um, share comments. And it's going to put your name into the drawing. All right. It's already collecting them. Okay, perfect. Okay. So at the end, we're going to go, we're going to give away four of these, one of each style. Okay. Does that sound like fun? Four winners instead of one? 
I think that sounds like fun. Okay, well, I've already kind of plotted out some of my designs for these. Um, we're going to start with the uh, round plates. Let me just kind of move some things out of the way here. I'll put them right here behind me. Okay, so we're going to start with the round plates. So these round plates are so cute. They're so, so cute. They just look, they look like a paper plate, but listen, they are hard resin. These things are very durable, very hard to break. <laughs> Very strong, very durable. And I'm going to share with you my tip on creating a template for these. So you can see that they have the circle center. So if you want everything to fit in that circle center, we can make a template for this. Um, sometimes we don't want everything to fit in the circle center. So we don't necessarily always need this template but you might, okay? So the best way to make templates um, for these is, of course, if you have like an electronic cutter, you could measure it out. It is kind of weird, scary fractions. So for me, I just literally, I'll do it with a small one here. I just put a piece of copy paper, or if you have a piece of, of uh, tracing paper, you know, something like that, you could use that as well. But I just put a piece of copy paper down and then I just kind of take my fingers over that little ridge. There'll be a little ridge there. And if that's hard for you, you can also take like the end of a, um, a pen. Like I'm not drawing. I'm just using something to kind of burnish this down. And then what happens is you wind up with a really nice, neat, exact pressure mark okay that then you can go in and you can can um, cut out okay very very simple so that's how i did my my uh, round plates now to do the trays this is the smaller tray i did the same thing let me just kind of put this one in here right here and um, again, use the just kind of the end of this pin. You could use maybe a paintbrush or something. And I just kind of took it through the valleys here. So much easier than me trying to cut it and get it exactly right. To me, this was just super easy. And then when you look on the back, do you see how you get the pressure mark there? So you get this little, it's got like a little valley right there. So you get the pressure mark. So you just cut on the inside, just right there at the edge of that valley. Or, or I guess it's a mountain on this side. <laughs> okay. So it's really, really super simple. Very, very simple to make yourself templates. And templates are really good to have. Um, um, so I have a template for the large tray, the small tray, and of course, uh, the two circles here, right? The two circles. So it's just, it's very easy. And then when I lay them on my napkin art, I know exactly what it's going to capture. I don't have to worry about trying to figure out all those scary fractions and all those things, right? Um, it's just really easy to do, okay? And I like easy. I really do. I like easy. I don't want to have to pull out a bunch of other tools and, and things like that. So that is how I made my templates. Now, the other little surprise I have for you. You ready for it? Y'all, my hair is a frizzy mess because it was so pretty. I had it curled and it was all pretty and it's raining here. And I went to one of my grandsons uh, had an awards ceremony early this morning and I got rained on. And now it's it's just, <laughs> I feel like it's a big frizz, frizz bomb. <laughs> it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and frizzier as the day goes because of the rain. But I am happy we're getting some rain. So anyway. All right, that was just a side note about my hair that none of you care about. So you can just forget that. <laughs> so the templates are easy, right? We're going to be applying napkin art. All of the napkins I use today, we put into a little bundle. So we're, I'm just feeling extra merry this week. I did it on Wednesday. I'm going to do it again today. Any napkins that I use today, we're putting into a bundle. And so anybody that purchases... Um, trays or the melamine plates or the melamine trays or one of each or just one, no matter what it is, we're going to throw in a napkin bundle 
uh, the napkins that I'm using. We're going to throw in this variety of napkins. Okay. Isn't that cool? Let's see if we can make something happen here. Oh, there goes balloons. I think, I think two fingers makes confetti. There we go. <laughs> so, um, that is going to be your Merry, Merry Christmas bonus to me today if you purchase any of the melamine plates or trace. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me post this link one more time here. Um, it's just me today. So I got to make sure I'm posting links. The girls are packing and shipping. My whole team is working on that because we want to get everything out by this weekend um, uh, for guaranteed deliveries and stuff, you know, things like that. So. All right, let's put this one back over here. I'm going to start with our round plates today. Okay, which means these two go over here. Kind of have it all planned out today. <laughs> all right, let's start with our smallest plate here. And um, if you're curious about um, the actual measurement of the full size plate, this is a seven inch plate. And I believe this one is nine inches. I think they're seven and nine, something like that. And we're going to just use simple Mod Podge today. Very simple napkin art. Um, and then, like I said, when we get some of these done, I want to talk to you a little bit about resin for those of you that may want to add resin to your plates. So the napkin I want to start with today is going to be Santa. Santa, he's so cute. Look at all the presents. So he would be very cute on this plate, right? You can add paint to these plates. You can add sparkle to them. You can do all the things. So this is my template for the round. So if you knew all you wanted was something in the round space, you would just lay this out. That's what we're going to be doing on the second plate. You would lay this out and just cut around it, right? Just trace it out. You can trace it with your friction pin, which disappears with heat, okay? Um, and then just cut that out. Now, because it's on a white napkin, I don't think I'm going to cut this one out. I think I'm going to get rid of the red lines around the napkin. Um, I don't really want to put it on like that. I don't want the squareness of that. So I'm simply going to just cut around. I want to keep his boot. And I'm going to take away the red border of this napkin. So if anything crosses over this red border and you want to keep it, like the little end of this bow right here, and just cut that part out. And we're just going to lose the red border here. I'm going to cut along the candy cane really simply. Now, I'm cutting my napkin with the plies on. It's, to me, it's just much easier to do that. And I am going to be using the plastic wrap today plastic, uh, the deli bakery wrap, uh, deli bakery sheets. So again, I'm going to cut kind of around that part. Okay, so now I have no border. So what's going to happen is all of this is just going to kind of come here onto the plate. I think it's going to be super cute. Okay, so y'all know how I feel. I don't always like straight lines. I have to have a little bit of straight line down there with the presence. So just kind of be a little wavy with it. I promise it's going to blend in on the plate beautifully. These plates have kind of a matte finish to them. Um, and that is awesome for our napkin art. Because gloss finishes sometimes, you know, it's it's you can just see more of stops and starts, you know, things like that. So let's separate this napkin here. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be so cute. We're gonna start off easy. One image. <laughs> But we can do more than one. We can. And like I said, if you wanted to add paint to your plates, you can. But I'm not going to today. 
I'm gonna, I might add some pin work. I might add some sparkle. All right, and let's zoom this in just a little bit here. I'm gonna make myself small and we can zoom in a little bit more here. Okay, so I'm gonna just use my good old Mod Podge matte. It has a satin finish. It'll be great. Mod Podge matte. They do make a dishwasher safe Mod Podge, but you guys, that it just won't last. It will not last if you put things like this in the dishwasher. So even if you do use the dishwasher safe Mod Podge, don't trust it. Your pieces won't last near as long. They're not going to have near as long of a life. So you might as well just use uh, the regular Mod, regular Mod Podge, the Mod Podge mat. So I'm going to be just kind of coating a nice, you know, healthy coat on here. And I am going outside the circle, so I need to keep that in mind. And then I'm just going to place him however I want to here onto the plate. So cute. Now I'm going to grab my plastic wrap and lay it down. And I'm going to start in the center. Actually, I'm going to start with this face. I always want to be sure whatever's key to the napkin, I kind of start with. want to make sure his face looks great. And then anything that goes over that kind of circle edge, we're also going to take our finger and really go around that circle edge. We want our napkin to conform. We don't want any gaps. We want it to conform to that edge. Okay, so anything that goes over the edge, this is going to look so cute. Now you can cover the whole entire plate, and I've done that before, but today I want to keep these easy. I think that that's something that you could work your way up to. Um, and I mean, look how cute. Is that not the cutest? So cute. I'm going to dry the napkin just a little bit, and then I'm going to go ahead and put on my top coat. So when I put the top coat on, thank you for sprinkling, guys. Thank you so much. When I put the top coat on, I'm going to um, cover the whole entire top of the plate. That way I've got the same finish right all over. But you know what? Before I, well, Leah, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah, let's go ahead. If you have to add a top coat um, before you add any kind of pin work, if you want to add pin work to your napkin, if you want to add sparkle to your napkin, and because I'm creating holiday plates, um, yeah, I want all of these to, to have some kind of sparkle on them. And I mean, gosh, you guys, this is Santa. He definitely, he needs to sparkle. So just a nice kind of a top coat. Make sure and get wherever your fingers were. I don't try, I don't like, you know, put so much on that I have to worry it's going to drip over the edge or anything like that. And then we're going to let this one sit and dry for a minute. And we're going to go ahead and work on the next plate. We'll come back and add some special details to him in just a, just a minute. Okay. Isn't he cute? So if you get any melamine plates or trays today, this is one of the napkins that will be in your, in your little treat bundle from me as a Merry Christmas. Okay. Let's do another one here. This time we're going to add some extra, a little extra on it. So this time, this napkin is We Wish You a Merry Christmas, and I want this to be in the circle. I want it to be a true circle. So I think you can see that I took the square of the napkin. You're going to have to actually take a little bit more. See how the a little bit more than the square because of the size of the circle. And I literally just opened up my whole napkin, laid down my template, and just traced around it with my friction pin. Okay? Traced around it with my friction pin. That way it'll disappear. If I have any lines that are still showing after I cut it, they will disappear. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut my circle. So this one, we do want to go right into the circle. I just want you to see what it looks like. 
And then I'm thinking of adding a little extra fun on this one. All right. These could be really fun to do um, for all kinds of occasions. And then like my lemon one, the lemon tray that I showed you, we keep that in the kitchen. I keep that in the kitchen all the time. Just it's, you know, so you can do these for non-seasonal or for seasonal. And they're just so cute and they're so easy. They're easy and they're fun and they look adorable on easels and a plate rack something like that they just look great all right let's put this one down do you still mod podge on top if you resin you don't have to but it's not going to hurt and so i i'm going to go ahead and um top coat mine because I'm gonna do other things to them. So it just makes sense for me to go ahead and top coat it because if I'm gonna do any pen work on my napkin, my napkin has to be sealed, right? It has to be sealed. If I'm gonna add sparkle, just things like that that I don't want the napkin to absorb. So most of the time if I'm doing napkin art, yes. Even if I'm going to resin it, I, um, I will go ahead and um, put a top coat on. All right, let's see how we did on our circle. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of tap that in place. I'm not the best at cutting circles, <laughs> but don't worry, I have a little trick I'm going to show you later. So again, I want to kind of smooth where my words are first. And then I can kind of smooth to the outside edge. So let's smooth down there. And all around. So cute. Now I want to do something else to this one. I want to jazz this one up a little bit. So if you're like me and it's hard to cut circles, even when you have traced them and all the things, we can take a little bit of um, what I think I might do with this one is I might take a little bit of gold um, around the edge, something to just kind of set off that circle. All right, now let me show you what I want to do. I have this napkin. Let me show you what the full napkin looks like. This will also be in your little treat bundle. It looks like this. So it's all these pretty little ornaments. Well, I cut these ornaments up. I cut the ornaments up. So I have this little section and then I have this little ornament and I have this little ornament, these two. Okay. So I thought these would look cute to decorate kind of the outside area of my plate. So let's dry this just a little bit. Make sure this part is dry. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to arrange these on here. Now, anytime we do any kind of what I call napkin collage, okay, napkin collage, Oh, good. I'm so glad you love the tips. That's awesome to hear. Um, I want your projects to turn out fabulous every single time. So I try to really lay it on the line how it is. <laughs> um, all the things. So if I want to put like this kind of combination of ornaments right there, watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to come in here and actually let's cut this one down just a little bit. It's got this little kind of shadow look happening here. Okay, so I haven't separated it yet. I'm going to lay it right here. So there's a lot of this dark red kind of happening. Is that where I want it to be? Hang on. Yeah, I think that's where I want it to be. Okay, so this is where it's going to be. I'm going to take my friction pen and just 
carefully uh, kind of draw where it's overlapping. Okay, do you see that? This is my friction pin. Remember, friction pins disappear with heat. Every crafter needs one. If you don't have one, go to my shop, shop.misstracycreates.com and put in friction. Everybody needs one of these. You can stick it in your stocking. Tell everyone Santa brought it. <laughs> now I'm gonna put this back because I kinda wanna be able to see. So if I do decide to put maybe another ornament here or here, you see what I mean? Like I'm trying to kind of fuss up this plate. If I want to fuss this plate up, I could do it like that. I could, let's just, let me play around with this for a minute. I could kind of maybe even do it like that, right? Do you see what I mean? Just want to fuss it up a little bit. I don't know why, but I kind of like the yellow one on the bottom. So we have Christmas to contend with right there. So maybe we do it more like this. What do we think about that? I think that looks pretty cute, right? So we have to figure out how we want to do this. I think I'm going to pull this one over a little bit more. So this one, I don't think we're going to have to paint anything under at all. Or we could have it go like that. Ooh, I think I like that best. Okay, so what I'm going to do again is I'm just going to come in and very, just lightly, just lightly, I'm going to draw that little piece okay just that little piece that little section and we're gonna paint just a tiny 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 bit of white right there um here's my white paint not it's not gonna take much not gonna take much at all if i can get the lid open <laughs> Because I don't want this red to, to distort what I'm putting on top. So here's the goal. Okay, here's the goal. Don't go over your lines. You can kind of go right up next to them and try not to go over them. Now, if we do go over them, that's where pin work can kind of help us. But we don't necessarily have to go all the way up to the line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want a little bit more white showing and I like it when we can kind of mute where um, the napkin meets the plate so we don't see like that harsh line does that make sense to you guys hopefully that makes sense to you <laughs> so we're working if you just signed on we're working with melamine plates today and I've never featured these to the public. We just have had them for our Napkin Club members. Um, sometimes we have special product just for them. And um, so we're bringing it to you today for Christmas Craft and Chat. And then also uh, everyone that orders a melamine plate or tray, um, we're going to throw in a napkin bundle of the napkins I'm using today. As just a special treat a little special treat from me a little holiday uh, surprise from me to you actually it's not a surprise because you're gonna see all the napkins while we're creating today so I want to make sure that the paint is dry that is important and make sure the paint is dry before we put Mod Podge on top of it. Okay, these are so fun. 
Is that new napkin bundle available to non-members? This is uh, this is just a treat for you. It's past napkins that have been in past bundles. Um, and I'm just throwing in whatever I used today as just kind of a bonus, just as a thank you for um, ordering and purchasing uh, melamine plates or trays. Make sure we get it everywhere. Okay, and I'm going to start. Let's go ahead and start down here. I guess I should have taken my plies off before I put my Mod Podge on, huh? <laughs> I get it. I get it excited and I get in a hurry sometimes. Hmm. This one's being kind of persnickety. Let's see here. There we go. I see you. Come on. Sometimes that second layer can be tricky. All right, but we got it. See if this one will be easier. That layer was easy. Mm. There we go. Okay. So got these two. Let's go ahead just because I want to be sure the Mod Podge is still nice and wet. And let's see this one. Now I have to remember how I had it. How did I have it, girls? I think it was like this. Yes. Okay. I think it was. That look right yeah that's how I had it okay okay and there goes that one now if you're at home what you need to do is when you lay out your design on your plate you need to take a picture with your phone <laughs> because sometimes it's so hard to remember like exactly where we had planned for things to go <laughs> Even though you think you're going to remember, sometimes it's hard to remember. And then again, because this plate has grooves on it, see how I'm taking my fingers? You want to make sure your fingers go up and down in those grooves. We want the napkin to completely conform to the, the little grooves and ridges on the plate. Even around the little circle edge, all of those things. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right. Let's get this one, but I'm going to take the layers off first this time. Did I post the link to order the plates? I'll post it again. It's also up in the description. Okay. So these are super fun to work with. Except for this one is a little tricky with the, there it goes. Sometimes if I get a layer of a napkin that's just really being stubborn, I have to take a pin to it. But, and then sometimes maybe even a little piece of tape, washi tape or painter's tape can help too when you get a stubborn one. All right, let's put down. Our fresh Mod Podge here. And then this one, I do remember how it went. It went just like that. So cute. I took a clean part of my um, plastic wrap here. And up the ridges we go. 
up or down, either way, we want to, again, make sure everything contours and curves and grabs with our napkin art. Oh my gosh, I love this. Look how cute that is. All right, so what do we need to do next? You know, we're going to dry it a little bit. Oops, got a little piece of napkin there. And then we're going to put a top coat on it. And our other one looks like it's almost all dry. Aren't these cute? Can't you see these in the easels? Um, you could have them anywhere. They could be in your kitchen or really anywhere. They just make such a cute little decorative sign. And then they can function, a, a cute piece of decor. But then they can also function as, as a plate or a tray for you. Just remember, no dishwasher. No dishwasher. I can't tell what that is right there. That would be a piece of napkin. Maybe it's just Mod Podge. I'm not sure. All right, let's go ahead now. And again, we're going to do a nice, just a, just a thin, doesn't have to be super heavy, just uh, more so just even. We just want a nice, even coat. It's going to look milky. That's expected while well, it's wet, but it will dry nice and crystal clear. We want to seal the napkin. I'm going to come in and do some fun stuff to the napkin. And I'm just going to go ahead and do all my little ridges here, just so it all has the same type of finish in case I, I don't necessarily have to resin these. That's just a personal preference. If you choose to, you can. All right. Okay, we're going to put this one to the side. Isn't that cute? Okay, let's bring back Santa real quick. We're going to bring back Santa, and I'm going to go ahead and make sure that he is just, make sure he's just completely, completely dry. He feels really dry. Usually I kind of feel of them, and if they feel clammy or cold, I know they need to dry just a little bit longer. He's so cute. Now, let's make him sparkle, okay? He doesn't really need pen work because the, the napkin artist already put pen work on him. See all the black lines and things? <laughs> but let's add some sparkle. I'm going to just use stickles for this, and there's lots of uh, different colors you can use. I'm going to use unicorn right now, and I'm going to add unicorn. You can do this with a paintbrush or just the tip. I'm kind of painting mine in just with the tip here. And I like to do on Santa's, I like to do everything that's white. Just make him look, merry, just really marry his mustache, his eyebrows, the little palm, the little cuffs here by his gloves, and all the little fur down here on his coat. I like for all of that to sparkle. So I don't know if you can see the sparkle. You see it? Isn't that cute? Now, um, because this is a plate, um, I actually would let my um, stickles dry. And depending on, you know, how you're going to use it, um, I will put a top coat over this. That's really, I don't ever top coat stickles usually, but because it's a plate, I'm going to put some on the bow on this one. But because it's a plate, I'm going to, because I don't want any kind of transfer on food. And now, if you were going to resin, if you were going to add resin, then guess what? You don't need to put a top coat over your, over your Mod Podge. I'm sorry. You don't need to put a top coat over your stickles. Sorry. <laughs> ah, wrong words. So whatever of these presents that you want to be sparkly, it could just be the ribbon, could be the entire present, right? Could be just the a bow here or there, whatever you want to add. 
it's kind of fun. We didn't really need to add pin work on this one because like I said, it was already pretty much done for us. On this piece of napkin, and we'll definitely talk more about resin after we finish these plates so that I can have some time to open up for like Q&A. Nice. I'm going to put some sparkle on these little holly leaves and berries too. So again, I don't think a Christmas plate can sparkle enough. <laughs> so you can add whatever, however much sparkle that you want to on these and we'll let it completely dry. Okay. I try, I try, um, Arlene, <laughs> I try really hard, but it is a lot of things going on at once. Yeah, if you want to put um, something on top of it, like if you're not going to resin them and you still want them to function as a food tray or something like that, you could always um, um, use like a paper doily. You could put clear saran wrap over it so you can still see the pretty um, the pretty de decor, you know, the pretty uh, napkin art. So that's something else that I have done. Um, and then, but I don't want you to be afraid to resin either. So that's why we're, we're gonna talk about that too. So I'm gonna make sure this one is completely dry. This is another one that I don't really feel like it needs a lot of pin work because the ornaments already kind of have it. But I did want to show you how to kind of go around the plate, the circle part of the plate. So let's make sure everything's good and dry. Okay. Oh my gosh, yeah, stickles are, yeah. We need like lifetime stock in stickles, for especially for the holidays. <laughs> Let me pour myself some more Mod Podge for in a minute. Okay. Let's do just a little bit of pin work here. So um, right now there's plenty of pin work, right? I mean, I don't need to do pin work on the ornaments. They've got lots of accent, but I do think the star right here could use some. So I'm just going to take my pit pin because I want the star to kind of mimic the ornaments, right? And it doesn't have to be much, just a little bit of black around it. I'm not going to do the letters and then I'm going to come down here and um, also do the trunk, right? It's shaped like a, so just come in, add a couple lines. These are kind of artsy doodly lines, just so it kind of looks a little more like the ornaments. Okay, that makes sense? Okay, so the other thing I was thinking about adding, let me see which one of these has more in it. I think this one does is I'm going to take a little bit of gold around the edge of the circle. Let's see if this one. Okay. I think this one's got plenty in it. So I'm going to use my gold Krylon pin. Okay. Now you could use a gold um, or really any color um, type paint pin. And I'm just going to take this where it's kind of like half on half off. And I'm going to come around my circle to create this really pretty gold accent. Now, don't go over your ornaments. Most of the time, if I, the faster I go with this, the better it comes out. Uh, because that, is, that paint is just going to flow. So do you see how that kind of helps? Like if, you're, if you have a hard time with cutting... <laughs> and you need a little help with cutting um, those circles, sometimes a pin is great because the pin's kind of half off, half on. So it just fixes everything. And I'm going to take a little bit of this and also put it into the star. So I'm just, this is a chisel tip. So I'm just kind of taking that chisel um, part and adding a little bit of gold on the star. Right, and that cute, and then also I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit here in the trunk. I don't want to go over the words, but just just a little bit. So now we have a little gold accent at the top and the bottom, 
and going around the plate. Okay. Uh oh. Threw my lid here. Where is it? There it is. It's the wrong lid. So if there was anything else that you wanted to add gold, um, of course, on your ornaments or anything, you know, you could. Um, again, with my stickles, I'm going to come in and stickle this bow. I could put like glossy on berries. Glossy accents is something that makes things shiny. You could use your glaze pens, your gel pens, uniball pens, <laughs> all of the things. I'm going to do just the red stripes on this ornament. And I'm telling you, this just looks so pretty. And then um, if you do decide to resin it, the sparkle looks amazing underneath the resin. All right, let's see. I'm going to do all of the bow. So I try to kind of, I'm going to kind of keep it the same somewhat. And again, it's okay if you want to use a, a paintbrush to apply this part. I don't think I use as much when I do a paintbrush, so that's, that's a good thing. And whatever parts you want to sparkle can sparkle. Everything could sparkle if you want it to. Put some sparkle on the berries. I think I did it on these berries. Dot, dot, dot. Now I'm drawing this kind of quickly, but you don't have to do this quite as quick. You could take your time with it. Just want to show you how cute they look. Isn't that cute? All the sparkle. So, so cute. Now, we wish you a Merry Christmas. If we wanted to, we could actually sparkle this whole thing. We could literally come in and just sparkle everywhere. If you wanted to take black, like a fine, um, like the extra small pit pen and do black around it, you could. I am just going to kind of use the tip and I'm going to trace along the letters. Um, it's okay to go inside like a loop of an E. Um, you know, it's okay. I'm just going to, I'm not really trying to keep the stickles inside. I just want I'm just tracing, right? Just kind of tracing along. Wherever it goes, it goes. But it's mainly on the letter. And then my writing will sparkle. Almost done. It helps if you hold your mouth just the right way. Maybe stick your tongue out. <laughs> Don't forget to dot an I or cross a T. Just a really pretty accent. There's a piece of something. A napkin. Come on, get it off there. Okay, got it. See what I mean? I don't even know if you can see it, but I promise it's there. There's some sparkle going on in there. <laughs> and I think that looks so cute, right? Right? Let's look at them over here on this camera just so you can see. Let's see. Make sure it's right. So, yeah, you can kind of see the sparkle. They're just so cute, so pretty. Let's look at Santa. Just really cute. So these could even be cute together. 
right? Let me make this go in. Look how cute they'd be if you had them on display together, just standing up. Really cute. I know, right? So, so fun. So I would let my stickles completely dry. Um, if I'm not going to resin, let me repeat this. If I'm not going to resin, I will put just a, just a very thin layer of Mod Podge on top of, of any areas that I stickled. Okay. Just because I will be letting mine function both ways. Okay. Makes sense as decor and as a serving um, plate. So I think these turned out really cute. All right. We're going to switch, switch up now and we're going to move to the trays. All right. The trays. Oops. I just dropped a napkin. All right. I'm going to sit these back here because so they can continue to dry. All right. And we're going to talk about the small tray first. These would make beautiful gifts. Again, they don't have to be seasonal napkins. They could be any kind of napkin that you want. And I have a couple things I want to show you on this one. This particular tray, this is the small tray. The small tray, you guys, is great for a what we call a guest towel napkin. Here's my templates that I made. This is the large. This is the small. Um, let me show you. I mean, it's just perfect. Look how cute for those guest towel sizes. And then you could stand it up or it could be, you know, laid down to be a tray, however you want to use it. But if you have a lot of these guest towel type napkins, this size is what we call a guest towel. They're perfect for this, this size tray. Okay. Really, really cute for this size tray. So in your bundle, in the little treat bundle of napkins, I'm going to give you, we cut these in half because I'm giving you half, which gives you three of this little welcome known and three of this let it snow a snowman. Okay. Um, so this welcome gnome's cute. He's more of a winter style. I think he looks really cute. I'm actually going to work with the snowman today, but you are going to get both in your treat bundle. Okay. You are going to get both in your treat bundle. So this is a little bigger than this square. Okay. So we're going to use that template, which I just had. Oh, here it is. So this is the template I made that I showed right at the beginning of our Christmas craft and chat. So if you missed that, you can go back and watch the replay on how I made the template. So here's the template that's going to fit right into the tray. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go lay my template now over this square. Well, if I put it down here, I lose some of let it snow. Well, I want to keep that part. I want to keep let it snow. So I'm going to bring this right above let it snow. I want it just right above it. I want to make sure I keep all of that. But you can see you lose very little of this um, guest towel napkin. So I'm going to take my friction pen. Oops. And I'm going to trace my template here. So now I know wherever I cut, um, I've got this sized perfectly for that inner portion of the tray. Okay. So let's take some scissors here. I'm going to use my longer scissors this time. And I'm going to cut right along those lines. And this is simple because we don't have to layer a thing. This one's going to be so cute, right? It's going to go right to the, right exactly the size that we need it to be. <gasps> cute, cute, cute. This one's going to be super fast. So do you see what I mean? It's going to go right in that little center portion. <laughs> It'll be so cute. Um, I size the templates out by putting down copy paper and then um, doing kind of pressure marks around it. But you can, if you prefer to measure this inside part out, you could do that too. Some of the measurements come out um, for some of these pieces, kind of, kind of scary fractions. So just easier, I think, to make a template. 
Look how adorable this is. Okay, so if this goes down, now I could keep it just simply just like this, right? I could just make my tray just like this. If I did want to add anything else on, I kind of need to think about that. I don't have to. I could leave it just like this. I could paint the edges of this if I wanted to. I could do, you know, lots of different things. Um, I just want to show you one more thing here. Everybody's going to get this napkin too, because I think that napkins like this are great when if we just want a little bit of, I don't know, movement. I'm not even sure I'm going to use it on this one, but I'm giving, giving it to you anyway, because you could use it uh, anywhere you want. It's just nice sometimes to have a little extra greenery just in case, and especially um, with a snowman. So do you see what I mean? Like if I wanted to put maybe a little bit of pine cone action kind of down here on one corner, or maybe I want to put a little bit of pine cone action up here, right? Isn't that cute? Totally optional. Like I said, it would be really fast if all you did was just go in and put down um, the center part. But you know me, I gotta gotta add add some extra. <laughs> just fun. It's fun to add some extra, right? Okay, so we're gonna start with this part of our snowman, and I've taken all of that off. I'm going to go ahead and take the plies off of these. I'm not going to use this much, but I want to make sure I have enough to kind of move things around. I am very partial to snowmen. I love snowmen. I think it's because I live in Texas and we hardly ever get snow. So when we do, it's just if we ever get enough snow to make a snowman, to me, it's like like a magical day. <laughs> I love it. Okay, let's go for it. You're going to see how quickly this this one comes together. And if you kind of make your plan ahead of time, it really makes it nice. Um, those of you, again, um, if you wanted to put paint or use a marker, um, um, a Krylon pen, you know, something, paint pen, something like that around this little valley um, here. You could. I'm not going to. I'm just going to line this up. So just kind of, I like to kind of drag it down. And then I'm just going to make sure that I'm, and I am, I'm all set here. Okay, perfect. Let's grab our plastic wrap. Now, this one's going to be decorative in the center, but I want to remind you, do you remember the lemon one that I showed you? Do you remember that? Now, those black lines you're seeing are from my friction pen, so they're going to disappear. Okay, they're going to disappear, so don't worry about that. Make sure and go all around these little, the little valley here, just in case you have a little bit of napkin, go over the edge. I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit. I don't want to take up all of your day. Cute, cute, cute. So I'm going to bring back this one just to show you again. Um, this is the large tray. But how I use this one is I didn't want the decoration here, even though this is a napkin right here. And I put, put it sparkles. And then um, I put my decorative napkin around the outside edges. This one has resin on it. And I used it for you this uh, could be used for just a cute tray with like, you know, glasses or cups or, you know, just whatever, um, kind of a fruit serving tray, you know. Um, so I just want y'all to envision that it doesn't have to just be Christmas. Okay. So now because this napkin is mostly white, okay, this napkin is mostly white, I'm not going to have to paint anything, which is nice. Uh, I'm just going to take my, let me make sure this is dry and want to get rid of my lines here. Mm 
Oh, I thought that was my friction pin. Maybe I didn't cut it very well around the sides. Well, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so if I want to put this down, do you see what I mean? Like I don't have to, I don't have to worry about what that's going to look like, right? Um, because it's white underneath it. It's a light, the stuff is light that's underneath it. So I do want to make sure that my napkin is, you know, uh, fairly dry because this is going to overlap some of it. And then I was thinking I would just kind of, I don't want it to be too, too much. just want to add some of these. Now I'm going to bring these up. This needs to kind of go over the edge just a little bit. We're not going to Mod Podge it over the edge. We're just going to sand that part off. Okay, I'm going to sand that part off. Let me switch my view, you guys, and bring this up so you can really see. So do you see how I need it to kind of go over that edge? It's got kind of a, a, a rounded lip, I guess you could call it, a rounded lip on that edge. This napkin also is not pure white. It's got this kind of shadowy shading around it. So I'm going to just kind of take my finger and make sure I'm going uh, uh, kind of over that edge. We'll just come in and sand off the rest. I guess you could take it around to the back if you wanted to. Whoops. Okay, I have a little lift right here, which means I didn't get quite enough napkin right there for that pine cone so let's get that down okay so you're going to have this excess right here i don't wrap mine underneath i just sand them off when it's dry okay does that make sense guys guys and gals all right now let's do a piece of it down here so it's cute. It doesn't have to be the whole, the whole edges of the tray don't have to be covered. They could be like my lemon one. It just depends on, you know, what you want, what you're looking for. And maybe this one we take. Um, let's take it right here. Okay, you have to think about how it's going to kind of go up over the edge and then just kind of tap it with your finger. Okay, now we'll grab our plastic wrap. And let me post, I'm going to post the link to these trays again. Again, our um, little fun Mary bonus today is any of the napkins I'm using. We're going to throw in with your purchase of a melamine plate or tray or both. We're going to toss that into your purchase today. Okay, I see one thing I'm not crazy about. So I'm going to show it to you here in just a second. Again, I want to make sure I'm going up over that little edge there. Make sure my little valley is good. Okay, can anybody guess what I'm not crazy about? <laughs> can anybody guess? I don't like that. Do you see how that's cut so straight right there? So we got to fix that. I don't like that. So I'm going to cut off a little piece here. And let's see if we can maybe go over this a tad. I don't like that little straight cut right there. Somehow I missed that. Do you see it right here? Little straight cut right there. So we're going to fix that right now. I just cut a little sprig and I'm going to bring this sprig right on top of that one. Now I feel better. Now I feel better. <laughs> Something, I know it's little things, but little things like that. Oops, 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 oops. There we go. All right, now we need to dry this. Isn't that cute? With a few little pine cones, little branches.
think it would be these branches would be these branches and pine cones would be cute with either one of the napkins you're going to get in the treat bundle this one or the winter gnome in fact we can kind of look at the winter gnome right here it's so cute And this is great because this could stay out all winter. It doesn't have to just be Christmas. All right. So now we have that done. Now this is a finer grade of sandpaper. It's a little bit more fine because I don't want to scratch up the plate. I just want to lose um, the napkin. Okay. So don't use anything that's super gritty. Something just a little more fine. Probably could even use an, an emery board if you wanted to. And we're just going to sand right along that edge. See how pretty it looks when it's sanded? Really pretty. Sands off really easily. So don't use anything real gritty. Perfect. Perfect. How cute that looks. What is that? Something kind of pinky right there. I don't know why I'm always have residue. Oh, I know what it is. It's dried Mod Podge. Okay, I'm going to that off. Okay. So let me bring us in a little bit so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Isn't that just the sweetest? So um, again, now everything is dry. So I am going to do a top coat. Um, and when I do this top coat, I'm just going to go ahead and just do the whole tray. Okay. It's just the easiest time to do it. That way everything has the same finish. And then if you do want to go in and do pen work or add any kind of paint pen, like the Krylon pen. Um, if you want to um, add stickles, you know, all of the things, your napkin will be ready to receive it. And you'll be all set. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next tray. Um, excited about this next tray and show you what the tray can look like going the other direction okay so we're gonna let this one um, dry of course I would be adding stickles to the snowman <laughs> I might do silver on this one around the outside square but isn't that cute and the, again the the Mod Podge will be milky but it'll dry crystal clear isn't that cute okay I'm gonna put this one to the side because I have one more I want to show you and that way you'll know all the napkins that are going to come in your as your little special merry treat from me to you and it's this one <laughs> i absolutely adore this napkin i'm going to show it let me take all the pieces off i kind of have it planned out how i want it to go i love this napkin um, look at these trees. It does have kind of a vintage feel. Part of it kind of feels kind of fabric-y to me. They're just so beautiful. So if you like um, this look, I think you're really going to like this napkin on this particular tray. Now, I've already used my um, template. Okay. I've used my template to cut this down. And then I'm going to be adding in these poinsettias. So you are going to have a napkin that has all of these poinsettias and birds these little birds and poinsettias you're going to have that napkin in your bundle as well i just love this one i know i think it might be one of my all-time favorites too it's just so unique right um and it's so fun to find napkins that are so unique like that All right, so do you notice? So instead of having this one go up and down like this, your trace can also go like this. It's up to you however you want to, you know, 
it depends kind of on what you want to display on them. And, you know, I didn't mention this, but to those of you crafters out there that love to do like um, vinyl or vinyl stenciling for words and things like that, um, it that, that works very well on these melamine trays as well. So if you did want to customize something, maybe put on a word or someone's last name, um, uh, the vinyl really takes nicely to these melamine surfaces, whether you're using it as, as a stencil or actually putting the words on. All right, so again, I'm going to kind of line up the bottom of this. So start either the top or the bottom, whichever, uh, whichever works best for you. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm straight. And I think that I am or close enough. <laughs> okay. Let me post the link again to these plates and trays. And then as soon as we finish this one, I'm going to talk a little bit about resin. Now I want you to take your little take a little more time than I am with smoothing these down. Um, make sure and smooth them down really well. That's how you can avoid having any kind of uh, wrinkles, crinkles, things like that. I can tell I'm moving a little too fast. But I just I know we're already into it's almost 12:15, so. I don't want to take up your whole Friday. I know it's a busy time. So this one, I just opened up the napkin, you know, and cut the portion that I wanted. I mean, it's beautiful already, just like this, right? Isn't that gorgeous? So I could come down and just add stickles like snow if I wanted to. I do have a few little, a few wrinkles here, but that's my fault for rushing, but that's okay. I don't think they'll even... We'll even be able to tell here in a moment. So let's dry this. This is the large tray, like my, the lemon one that I showed you. Let's make sure it's pretty good and dry here. And we're going to arrange some poinsettias and some birds on this one. So I have this poinsettia that actually the bird was kind of attached on the napkin. So I just left it. And so my thought was, I'm going to put this, this one right here and make this bird look like it's perched on top of that tree. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so I'm going to have that one there. And then I want to have one, I think, right, well, I haven't actually been able to decide yet. Maybe y'all can help me decide. I was thinking about maybe one over here. And then I have this kind of this little gap. So I was thinking about putting a little bird kind of in this little gap or maybe even, yeah, maybe right there. More on the white. Just kind of in this little gap, like in the, in the ground, on the ground. <laughs> But I always like threes, so I do like threes. So part of me was thinking, well, maybe we do this then. Maybe we put a cluster, maybe this one over here, and this one maybe kind of like right here. I do like threes. So this could kind of come up and over. Um, Maybe even like that. And if we want our bird to come up, you know, our bird could kind of come up or go down or wherever, wherever it needs to be. It could even be kind of like that. I don't know. What do y'all think? Do you like three or two? <laughs> Let me know. And guys, I don't think these are going to really need any kind of painting behind them. Um, I'm going to be the guinea pig here and and try this. I really think that this is 
not going to alter my colors much at all because these poinsettias already have kind of this pinkish purplish look more so than bright red i think they're going to be okay what do y'all you can kind of tell it'll be brighter over here so i have to decide do i need to add a little bit of paint behind those areas I mean, if I do, it's it's okay. It's simple. I think I'm going to. I'm just going to because I don't want to be disappointed. All right. So that means with my friction pin, again, just kind of coming around. Whatever needs to be painted. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm within those lines. I'm not going to go outside of those lines. So there's my... See my pin lines right there. Okay, I think that's all that one's gonna need. I don't think those other two are gonna need anything. Okay, so it's not much. Can just take this from my lid here and sometimes I'll use a smaller brush for this um, especially when I'm painting in kind of a smaller area so my goal is not to ever go over I don't even bring my paint to the um, um, to the line because most of the time when you're drawing the line, it's because you're out, you know, you're outside of the area so It's coming from the tip Perfect And then just filling in So I don't want you to think it's hard because it's really not you're just tracing Putting in a little bit of paint doesn't have to be perfectly painted, doesn't have to be completely opaque. It's just going to keep our napkin from changing color. Okay, so it can be messy like that. Okay, let's go down to this edge. It was a little harder to see. Okay, get it. Okay, I think that will be good for this one. And then don't forget, if you're having trouble cutting some of the napkins. When I start, like you've mentioned, to cut them to design, use them, makes all the difference. Yeah, um, I do think that it does make all the difference. And if you're doing kind of a loose fussy cut anyway, um, so much of it is just going to kind of just be part of the background, you know. All right, make sure our paint is dry. This is one we could easily add a word to if we wanted to. We could add, you know, if you did want to add words or something, um, you could. Again, always kind of the, the feel test to make sure paint is dry. <laughs> you don't want Mod Podge getting, I mean, you don't want paint getting smeared when you put the Mod Podge on. And then just make sure you have plenty going up the side. All right, this is our first poinsettia that's going to go down. All 
All right, so it's like a puzzle, right? It's kind of like a puzzle. We're just going to kind of line up within where we painted, just like a puzzle. If a little bit of it shows, I think I'll definitely do some pen work on these poinsettias for sure. Now let's go ahead and get this one off. Oops, I'm not all, all the way on the camera. I'm sorry, guys. Here, I went in a little too far, didn't I? There we go. I don't remember exactly how I had this one, but I think it was something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth this down, and then I do have a place where the poinsettias overlap that I'll have to add a little more Mod Podge. Make sure you go down in that little ridge that goes around. Take your finger, kind of the fatty part of your finger, and that little, um, we'll call it a valley. Make sure everything conforms to the plate. Okay, so I did have an overlapping piece, but it's not coming up, which means that enough Mod Podge kind of oozed up through the, the bottom, the this napkin, that it took care of that. So that part is good. Let's put on our little bird. Do you see someone in your life that might like a project like this? Again, just make sure, and if you do gift this, we need to make sure and remind whoever you give it to that it is not dis dishwasher safe. And uh, it's just kind of a, a hand wash, a, a quick wipe down. <laughs> Okay, now let's go over here to this part. I started to say, what is that? But that's part of the tree. And even if you do decide to resin them, um, I still would not put them in the dishwasher. I don't. I would still do a hand wash. All right, this one should be pretty easy to line up because we have our little bird. So let's get our bird down, and then everything else should fall right into place. Okay, perfect. Again. Oops, let's go right here. The plastic wrap. Have you guys enjoyed this Christmas craft and chat? <laughs> I hope so. And I know I could have just made one project, but I really want y'all to see how different all of this could be. Take it back this direction since I have some Mod Podge on there. There we go. You're loving this one? Good. Well, like I said, it's something, um, this is giving you a really kind of a fun look at a type of project that we would have done in the Napkin Club. Um, if you are in the Napkin Club, I do have a resin workshop in there showing you how to resin your melamine plates after. Um, they don't have to be poured they can be painted because you just need a thin coat so you won't need a lot of resin to finish these out if you did decide to resin them all right i really like this one 
Okay, so let's seal it. And we want to seal all of our napkin art. We want to protect it. We want it to last. Um, I want my pieces to last. I get so frustrated when I pull out things that I've crafted um, over the years and I have to fix them or repair them. So I try really hard to make sure and show you all the best techniques that I can for your pieces to really, really, really last. We're going to put all this, they're like a labor of love, right? I mean, we're putting all this effort into them. I want them to last forever. So I'm kind of going in this little valley here. Need a little more Mod Podge. There we go. That's better. And then just make sure that you go all over the plate. And this is another one I could go in. I, could, I definitely see pen work on this one. I would do pen work on all the poinsettias. Um, I would do pen work on the trees. And I keep getting stuff on my plates because I have dried Mod Podge on my fingers. So if you guys clean your hands in between these steps. <laughs> all right. Okay, so this one needs to dry. So um, I think you get the gist about doing the, the pen work and all of the things. This one will be dry here in just a minute. Um, so I kind of would like to talk to you a little bit about Mod Podge. And of course, as soon, when these are done and I add all my little details, um, I will definitely post pictures for you um, here on my page, okay? Yeah, you can, it's, it's, this is going to be a gorgeous one. Isn't that pretty? Very kind of vintage feeling and just beautiful. So, so pretty. So let's bring, um, we'll bring, let it snow back over here. So you have something cute to look at while we talk. <laughs> okay. My first question would be how many of you have done resin before? Has anybody done resin before? Okay. So if you did decide to add resin like this one, it's going to give it this nice shiny look to it when it's cured. You can see that there's sparkle on these. The sparkle looks great under the resin. Um, very, very cute, very easy to work with. So. The resin that I use, if I'm going to add resin to something, is called Art Resin. We have a little bit of this in stock, but you can also find this at Hobby Lobby. Okay, we really just carry enough stock for me because it's so readily available. <laughs> so Art Resin is what I use. It does have a resin bottle and a hardener bottle. So you do have to do equal parts when you do resin okay so it's going to be a really good idea to get yourself some of these um it's a disposable measuring cup do you see how it has the um the measurements on here but it's just a plastic cup they're just disposable this is what i get you can get them amazon you can get them at the grocery store um they're pretty easy to find now that have the little measurements on them so i'll usually use one of these kind of cups and I'll pour in, um, uh, it has to be exactly equal parts. So if I'm going to pour in one ounce of resin, I have to pour in one ounce of hardener. Okay. And you'll do it in the same cup. And then it has to be mixed, not beaten. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to use this little stick as an example. Not like this, not beaten. It has to be stirred, just kind of like folded in, stirred. 
um, for exactly three minutes. I always set a timer on my phone. That doesn't matter how many ounces. It's just always three minutes. And just kind of let it fold in. Just kind of fold it in. The thing is, if you try to do it like this real fast, you get micro bubbles. And we don't want micro bubbles. Okay. Then once you've done this for three minutes, then literally for a project like this, I don't pour these. All right. Now you'll see some people with art resin that have done beautiful glass, like broken glass pieces or pebbles or all the things. I do resin over um, um, napkin art that I put dimensional things onto the napkin, which could be little glass pebbles or vase filler or you know, little whatever, broken glass, whatever. Um, it's really fun to do. And we will be doing a little bit more of that in the napkin club coming up in 2024. Um, so, but if I'm going to do a tray like this, I don't really want to pour it. I want to paint over it. So you can take a, it can even be a paintbrush. Just know that it's going to be a paintbrush that you're going to have to throw away. Okay. You're going to have to throw it away once it's done. The resin is just going to ruin it. There's no way to really clean it up and literally just go in and paint it on. Resin will kind of spread and self-level even when it's thin, okay? Even when you're putting it on thinly. So instead of pouring this, I'm literally dipping into the resin and I'm painting it. I kind of paint it on, okay? Because I just need a little thin coat over the top. I don't need you know, layers and layers. I'm not trying to hold glass onto something or, you know what I mean? So you can do that with a paintbrush. Just know you're going to have to throw it away. Or one, a thing that I don't have here to show you because I have it at home is one of those little silicone. Have you seen the little silicone brushes? Um, usually you can find them in the makeup aisle because people use them to take like masks off their face or whatever. The little silicone brushes are great too. And I don't know if we have any of those in stock. But those are great because when the resin dries on them, you can just peel it back off. OK, but I do feel like sometimes with the silicone brushes, you can even get too much resin on a tray. It just depends. Right. If I just want a thin coat, I think you're really better off using a brush. Um, you have about 45 minutes of working time um, after your three minutes. OK, so and then they have to sit like overnight. They have to sit overnight. Don't touch them. <laughs> if you think they're completely dry, let them dry a little longer. Because if you touch resin and it's not completely dry, your little fingerprint could probably will probably be in that project for, you know, forever. <laughs> okay. So really, really fun to do these. Like I said, these melamine plates, I think I said this earlier, they are um, matte. They're kind of feel, they feel kind of porous. They're matte, meaning they don't have a high gloss on them already. They are great to napkinize. They just grab the napkins so well and they blend right in with the surface. So um, it's different than like, you know, you may even have some melamine in your kitchen right now. Um, it just it's just different than putting a napkin on one of those that already has the gloss on it, the glaze gloss on it. So I think these are just awesome. Like I said, you can paint them if you want to, um, but I just work with them white. You know, they're already primed and ready to go for the napkins. OK, so, yeah, you can just spread. Yeah, Beth, you can spread a thin layer with your fingers, too. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's. I don't want you to be scared of resin, um, but I also know that it's almost Christmas and you may not have time to uh, to deal with the, you know, the nerves of trying something new <laughs> right now. So even if you just put these out on display, like I said, if you want to serve um, uh, like something warm or, you know, some kind something on them, some kind of food product on them. Um, you can either use cute little paper doilies or even just wrap them in saran wrap. Okay. And then they can still see all the cuteness, you know, but I love having these to just, you know, prop up on an easel, have them out. I can use them whenever I want. You know, I just have them be, uh, they do two purposes for me. They serve as decor, really cute decor, but then I can also use them functionally. Okay. 
Yes, always wear gloves when you resin. And yeah, thank you for posting that because I did forget to say that. Wear gloves when you resin. You know what I'm talking about, just like the, the little plastic gloves that you can put on um, because this stuff is super sticky. It's super, super, super sticky. You don't want to get it on your fingernails if you just got a manicure or things like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, I think the first time for me with resin, it... If I could go back and have a talk with myself when I first started using resin, I was using way too much. Um, I thought that I needed to use more than I did. I did not really take into account the fact that it will self-level and spread on its own over the process of the time that it's you know setting up over, over a, a, a spread of hours. And so I'm always having to tell myself it's going to spread going to spread, right? You know, I mean, I, I need to, I feel like in the beginning when I was first using resin, I was really using too much. Okay. So a little does go a long way. All right. Um, can you do resin on a project for us to see? Yeah, I, um, I can. This one actually has resin on it right now. So you'll see how shiny it is. It gives it a really shiny appearance, but it's still a very, very clear. And um, look at the sparkle on that lemon. I'll kind of hold it at an angle. See how that, that stickles on that lemon? So all the sparkle, pinware, gold, whatever you do on it is going to show. And so it's just going to be really have this resin finish on it. <laughs> okay. Um, and resin, it takes about 48 hours for resin to completely cure. Once it's completely cured, it's food safe. Okay. So it's completely food safe after it's cured. Um, so anyway, that's what I have to tell you. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, craft and chat. If